Hi. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to create our Stalo app following on from the schema definition and other configuration, such as the workflow that exists on the Stalo server. We go straight into the SAP Web IDE and select New Project from Template. This is our link to the Stalo plugin, which is seamlessly embedded into the Web IDE, so it appears as any other template option would. Having selected the Stalo wizard, we give our project a name, in this case simply Fury underscore demo, and click on Next. Now we connect the app in the Web IDE to the schema on the server in Stalo. Here we have a list of all the apps that have been set up on the target SAP system. We're going to use this one, TWL1, which is for the travel to work loan. There are a number of other configuration options that are then available, not all of which are applicable to every app. It's possible to maintain more than one schema version, for example, or we can choose whether users should have access to draft or historical submissions. For this app, we're going to leave all those with their default values. Next, we need to select the layout for our app. You'll see that lots of the standard layouts are available, and for this app, we're choosing an icon tab layout. A header section can also be included, and we can enter either placeholder text for that or reference the pre-population model. Here, we're just adding some placeholder text so that when the app is first generated, we can see exactly how that will look in the header. That's all we need. We're ready to ask Stalo to generate our Fiori app. We click on Finish and Stalo then merges the schema with the relevant Stalo app resources based on the various selections that we've made. At this point, we're up and running with a fully functional app. We can run it straight away, so let's do that. We can see our icon tab layout, with each of the schema sections being represented by its own tab at a header section showing the placeholder text that we added. If we click into the application tab, you'll see that all of the field captions and field types have come through and all of my mandatory fields are highlighted with a blue asterisk. Characteristics like the drop-downs are coming through dynamically, as is the ability to add attachments and the actions available to the users. Let's quickly add an attachment and you'll see in the top right-hand corner of the app that we've been successful. If I were to turn off attachments in the back-end configuration, it will no longer be available to the end user and if I change the workflow for the app, these actions will also be updated at the next render. If I submit my app at this point, the validation that's been configured will flag up there are mandatory fields that haven't been completed and I'll have to correct those before submitting again. So let's do that before we move on. I'm sure you'll agree that app wasn't quite finished and before we deploy it we expect to make alterations and changes. So we're going to take a look at the deployed version now that's been updated a little. In this enhanced version the header section is pulling through real employee data from the pre-population model. Things like the icons for the tabs have been made more relevant and we've added some logic so that fields which are relevant only to certain loan types are hidden until a selection has been made. For example, here, once we've chosen the season ticket train option, then there are some fields to capture the train journey to and from the stations together with the loan period. We can also make more complex enhancements. In this case, the journey fields are actually now reaching out to the Transport for London site, calling an API to pull in details of available stations. After deploying this app, we decided to extend the validation and make sure there wasn't a loan in place for an overlapping period. So, without having to touch the app at all, that's now been activated through an update in Stalo on the server. We've changed the years, and as you'll see, an error message is now appearing at the top of the app. I'll push that out to next year, 2017-2018, and the application will submit fine. I hope you found this demonstration useful, and thank you for your attention today.